These are axial CT images of the abdomen and pelvis after the use of intravenous and oral contrast in a 52-year-old female with right lower quadrant abdominal pain. As we scroll down these images, notice already that we are seeing some colonic diverticuli arising off of the cecum here, or the ascending colon. As we scroll more inferiorly, notice that there's wall thickening of the cecum and some fat stranding surrounding the cecum, and we continue to see more diverticuli. These findings with perisecal fat stranding, wall thickening, and diverticuli is consistent with sequel diverticulitis. In any case, with right lower quadrant abdominal pain, it's important to identify the appendix and make sure that the appendix is not the culprit for the right lower quadrant pain. Here we can see the terminal ilium coming into the cecum, and here is the ileocecal fat and the ileocecal valve. And this structure here with some contrast and some air was identified as the appendix, which was normal in this case. So it's important to note that in a case of diverticulitis, it obviously it most commonly arises in the left lower quadrant at the level of the sigmoid colon, but the cecum can certainly be involved in diverticulitis, as in this case. Diverticulitis occurs in areas of diverticuli, which just mean that there are herniation or acquired herniations of the mucosa or the submucosa through the level of the muscular layer of the bowel. Uh, and diverticulitis just represents inflammation of that, of those diverticuli. It's also important to assess for complications of diverticulitis, which can result in sinus tract formation, pericolonic abscesses, intramural abscesses, colovesicular fistulas, or a fistulous connection between the colon and the bladder, as well as perforation. This was a case of uncomplicated sequel diverticulitis, since there was no evidence of perforation, abscess, or colovesicular fistula.